Hello, Manitou. Welcome to the fourth Sunday of Easter, in which we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday. I didn't have a sheep in my office I could find, so I have this uh, this donkey that uh, our resident potter, Jen Davis, created a while back when our arts came. So this little uh, donkey sheep says, uh, Good morning, and we're glad that you're with us, and uh, hope that this service is an opportunity for you to learn just a little bit more how to hear the voice of the shepherd. Thanks for joining us. Dad, your speakers aren't working. Uh, which speakers? The ones in here. We can, we can hardly hear. It's coming out of the mon the computer instead of the speakers. You have to um, you have to choose a different uh, speaker. You have to go into the speaker selection on the on the audio and choose the other speakers. So. We tried that. It didn't work. Okay. We'll crank it up. We'll figure it out. <laughs> up after. all the way and we can barely hear you. All right. Does it need fixing? Okay. I'm going to pause. I'll go fix this. The joy of COVID worship. Someone say something. Something. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. We got it figured out. Can everybody hear okay now? Yes. Give thumbs up. Okay. Everyone in here can hear okay. All right. Well, welcome to the fourth Sunday of Easter here at Manto. We're still in the Easter season. We still got the white vestments that are here as a reminder that Easter is not just a day. It's uh well, as we used to the kids used to sing every morning is Easter morning. Uh, maybe we'll get them to put that together at some point again. Um, this morning we, uh, we gather together to be reminded of who we are and whose we are. And one of the things, and Jeff, we'll go grab the water. One of the ways we remember who we are is through the baptismal waters. And, uh, we have a saying here at Manso, which we, uh, which we need to hear every, every morning, really. And it is this reminder of, uh, of who we are. And so I invite you to join with me in the saying we have, which is that I am a child of God, holy and beloved. And Jeff, go ahead and pour the water. May these waters of baptism be a reminder of who we are and whose we are. Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks for this day you've given us, for waking us up, for having a little mini resurrection each day as we lay ourselves down to sleep the night before. And then in the morning, we open our eyes and, and awake to a new day. And you have done it again. You have woken us up. And here we have the gift of this day. And how shall we spend it? What shall we do with it? We've decided that this time is important enough to set it aside and to gather together, despite the challenges of it, 
despite the disappointment of it in some ways with not getting to meet how we want to, we've said there's something about gathering together that, uh, that matters. And so, Lord, we ask that you would accept the offering of ourselves in our presence. We ask that you would help us to hear, help us to see what it is you're revealing to us, and then give us the courage, give us the hearts, give us the ability to be able to respond to the invitation you've given us. Pray this, O oh Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. So I do again apologize in advance to our Zoom uh, Zoom crowd and uh, and folks who listen to this later because the sound. If you were here in person, man, you you would you would mistake me for James Taylor. I I mean I'm telling you, it's it is incredible music, but. When it's translated, something's lost. And so uh, so if you uh, if you do feel so led to join with us and then singing the song, then great. And if and if and if our words are distracting, then you can just turn it down and 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 sing this because yourselves, because I think you probably know this tune. But you all hear, you can sing it out loud. I went down the river to pray, studying about that good old way. And you were there, starry crown, good Lord, show me a way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down the river to Oh, 
Because we do come as sinners, that is also a part of our identity, holy and beloved, still sinners, we come and offer our failings to God. We're able to do that each week. And so I invite you to join with me in this prayer of confession. And first, we are reminded we are beloved. You belong. So you wandered away. And what? did I do? All 99. Oh, beloved. So I invite you, as you feel led, to join with me in this prayer of confession. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We have also run afoul, acted a fool, gotten underfoot, and fallen on our faces. Forgive us, O oh Lord, not so much for our failures, but for believing they were too much, too much for you to see, bear, forgive, that we ever believe there's a point of no return. It is for believing this heresy that we see absolution. Lord, we pray and can confess these things in your name. We confess them as sheep to the shepherd. Lord, have mercy, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news, brothers and sisters. There is no distance too far. There is no, no place that is too lost. There is no hole that is too deep. There is no failure that is too bad for the shepherd to come and find us heal us and bring us back. It is this forgiveness which I am here to remind you of as we do each week that in Jesus Christ you are forgiven, you are forgiven, you are forgiven. And so let us offer our thanks for this mercy. With that, Sherry, will you share a poem with us? Lie Down by Nancy Paddock. Lie down with your belly to the ground, like an old dog in the sun. Smell the greenness of the clover leaf. 
Feel the damp, earth through your clothes. Let an ant wander the uncharted territory of your skin. Lie down with your belly to the ground. Melt into the earth's contours like a harmless snake. All else is mere bravado. Let your mind resolve itself in a tangle of grass. Lie down with your belly, flat out on ground level. Prostate yourself before the soil you will someday enter. Stop doing, stop judging, fearing, trying. This is not dying, but the way to live in a world of change and gravity. Let go, let your burdens drop. Let your grief charge bleed off into the ground. Lie down with your belly to the ground and then rise up with the earth still in you. Our reading is John chapter 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I'm the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the father know me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Sherry and, uh, and Tracy. Um, here, let's close this. So each, each week, I, uh, I didn't intend to do this, but uh, each week in the season of Easter, I started each message with a question. Three weeks ago, four weeks ago, I asked a question about an embarrassing moment to share an embarrassing moment. Uh, before that, or after that, I asked about a regret that you had. And then last week, I asked if you had a scar, the story of which you're willing to tell. And so now having begun that uh, pattern, I, I feel compelled to to keep it up. And so this morning, no surprise, I'm going to start with a question. My question this morning is, when have you either been forced or decided yourself to give up, let go, or lay something down? So when have you either been forced or decided for yourself to give up something, to let go of something, or to lay something down. It could be a relationship. It could be an object. It could be a habit. It could be a way of thinking. Um, when have you given something up, let go, or laid down? So as you think about that, I'll share mine, and then we'll, and then we'll, and then I give folks a little bit time to process this. So um so first does that question make sense enough sense I, and then i'll okay i'll share it and then and then and then we'll we'll go from there so 1995 actually 
on uh, Friday, I was invited uh, to meet a couple of uh, the, the, the pastors, folks on staff over at University Place Presbyterian Church for lunch. So I went over there. I had lunch with a couple of, uh, of, of, of guys who worked there. And uh, I hadn't been in that church in a number of years. And they've done some remodeling, so it looks different. But it, it, uh, being there reminded me of when I first came to Tacoma. It was in 1995, and I was stationed at Fort Lewis. And um, I lived in Stillicum. And, uh, and the only people I knew were the folks who I worked with on base. I mostly just would get up, I'd go to work, I'd come home. And I didn't get to really know anyone. So Sundays became important to me. I wanted to, I wanted to get involved in a church, to get to know folks. And, and so I started to look for a church and, and I went, I grew up Southern Baptist. And uh, so I went around and started with the, the Baptist churches. And I just didn't find any that, that, that clicked with me, that, that uh, seemed to be the right feel. Um, surprisingly, not surprisingly, that there's not too many Southern Baptist, there's not as many Southern Baptist churches outside the South as there are in the South. And so, um, so then I was like, well, what do I do now? And um, my grandparents were, were all Presbyterian and uh, had a couple of friends in college who were Presbyterian. So I said, well, maybe I should try the Presbyterians. And so how do you find your Presbyterian church that's closest to you? Well, just pull up the internet in 1995, right? You just pull out your smartphone and you Google map it, right? No. You had to, everyone here probably know, maybe not Malachi. Uh, there's this thing called the phone book. And in the phone book, it had lists of people's names and their phone numbers beside it. They only had one number per family. And, um, and unless you're one of those people who actually had like two lines, like you probably had two televisions also. But so, so, so I got the phone book and in it had this thing called the yellow pages. And I flipped to the religious section. There was Presbyterian. It listed some churches. And one of the first churches on there was University Place Presbyterian Church. And it was right next to Stillicum. So I said, ah, service at 1030. I'll go. So I went. And it felt good. Folks were welcoming when I came in. They said hello. They asked me how it was. And, uh, the, 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 the worship was good. The music was good. I, I see familiar songs, some new songs. And and then the, the, the pastor got up to preach. Reverend uh, Jim Mee preached. And the sermon was both challenging and, and uh, encouraging. And so I left. I was like, ah, that's good. I, I'm going to come back next week. And so next week comes. I go. Same thing. Very welcoming. Good music. And then the pastor got up to preach. And this time it was a different pastor. This time it was Lynn Corazon. And I listened to her preach. And I, the, the, the pews started to feel a little less comfortable. I, 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 it felt they weren't as cushiony. I started I was sort of moving around and I was having trouble paying attention. And, and the service ended and they were proceeding outside and, 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 and the pastors would stay at the, at the back of the sanctuary. And, and uh, Jim was on one side and, and Lynn was on the other. And I was going to try to go over and say hello to Jim. And, and, but I found myself in, in Lynn's line and I came up to her and and uh, she introduced herself, and and I uh, and I introduced myself, and I and I want to give some feedback on the sermon, but I couldn't think of anything, so all I could say was, "Thanks for the good sermon," and that was it. And I left, and I remember sitting in my car, and uh, before I left, I was like, "What? What just happened? What? Why do I feel less welcome today? Why? Why? Why was the service not as comfortable for me?" And, and then it dawned on me that this was the first time I had ever heard a woman preach. In the church I grew up in, women weren't allowed even to be deacons, let alone to be pastors in churches and preach. And this was just something I grew up with. And so if you'd asked me at that point, do you think women should be allowed to be ministers? I would have, I think I would have said yes. But there's a difference sometimes in what our head says and what our heart says and what we feel. And at that point, I didn't feel it. And I, I remember thinking at that moment, like, okay, here's a decision point. 
I, I, can, I can go and find another church where I'll only hear a guy preach, or I can lay this belief down. I can let go of it and see what happens. And so you can guess what I did by where I am today. But I will say that that wasn't necessarily easy in the moment, but it's changed over time. That was something I let go of. I laid, I laid it down. What about you? What, uh, does anyone have any shorter story than mine, of course, but uh, anything you've let go, laid down, given up? Carol. Yeah, so put down cigarettes. Yeah, thanks, Carol. I'm going to stand here so I can see. Beth. Um, I, when I grew up uh, for a couple of years in Georgia, and I had a horse, and I really loved it, and I was pretty much on the hospital most of the time because I was so sick, and um, I had to give it up. Well, mm -hmm. well actually, my parents gave it up when I, the last time I was in the hospital. So if you loved the horse, but it was killing you with the allergies, and you had to give up the horse. Oh. Thank you. Anyone else? Something you've had to let go, lay down. Malachi. Um, I let go, lay down my novels. And there you go. That's I love it. I love it. You got to lay down. You're working on your models, and it's dinner time, and you got to lay down. You get to pick it back up, but trade it out for dinner. Yep. And if you're and if you're on Zoom and you have something, just unmute. And Biting my nails. I used to bite my nails, and now I don't anymore. Biting my nails, Benjamin. Thank you. Kylie. Oh, go ahead, Kylie. Okay. Um, in eighth or seventh grade, I was friends with this girl, and it was not like a healthy friendship. So I let go of the friendship. Yep. Let go of a let letting go a friendship. I had to lay down my expectations for a normal senior year and just go with the flow. COVID has, we all could, I'm sure, mentioned some things we had to lay down and let go of for this season. And uh, in particular, for those who were students, letting go a whole year in some ways. Thanks, Jane. Rita. You get cancer, you have to let a lot of things go and let mm. somebody else take over for taking care of you. Yeah, yeah. Cancer causes a lot, have to let go of a lot. Thank you. Anyone else? I've had to let go of a few things this year <laughs> or recently. Once was on our backpacking trip. Not, I mean, I'm not per a person that really give up on things, but uh, the snow said otherwise for us on that. And then, you know, recently with a bike accident, I've had to give up on a lot of stuff. So that's been challenging. That's right. Yeah. We had to give up, give up summoning. Yeah. Thanks, Jeremy. And, and it's pretty easy for you, Jeremy, right? To give up stuff. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for being willing to share that. So in our passage today, we, um, we get this story in the Gospel of John, and although we've already experienced Easter, we're going back in, into the Gospel of John a little bit earlier, um, and uh, I, at first it seems weird. Why do we read a passage that happened before the resurrection when we're in the season of Easter? But I think it uh, it's, it's, can be really good because what happens to the disciples after Jesus' resurrection is it changed the lens through which they heard everything Jesus said. And so it's like, oh, let's go back and listen to what Jesus said in light of the resurrection, because it starts to change things. You're like, oh, that didn't make any sense the first time you said it, but now that this has happened, it's starting to make sense more. So, so they go back, 
And we are now reading this and listening to this in light of the resurrection. And this story or this, this passage um, begins with these words, I am the good shepherd. Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. And in the gospel of John, this may sound familiar because Jesus says, I am very often. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate. I am the resurrection life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the vine, the branches. I am, I am, I am. It could get confusing. Like, which, which metaphor are you going to get, Jesus? You're mixing, you're the king of mixing metaphors, but there's something about Jesus saying, I'm, I, God is so challenging to understand and yet so simple to understand that you have to be able to see God from many different ways. And so in this one, Jesus says, I am the shepherd, the good shepherd. And I'm guessing none of us are shepherds. I don't know anyone on here who's a shepherd. Does anyone even know anyone who's a shepherd? I'm betting, I'm betting you may have, we've seen sheep and you've probably petted a sheep, maybe at a petting zoo, but I mean, anyone birthed a lamb or Dave raised his hand. Okay, so Dave, this maybe this metaphor would connect a little bit more with Dave. For a lot of us, it's like, ah, shepherds, I don't kind of get that. And yet, at the same point, we kind of do get this. There is a, sim there's a simplicity to it of, of, of kind of getting a sense of, of what a, the shepherd being kind of like a coach or a teacher and the, and the sheep. Well, we, you know, we kind of see that sheep are cute and uh, can be kind of dull, it seems, at times little dim and that way I can identify with that and kind of mess up and get in trouble at different points and that makes sense to us and and so it was while preparing for the sermon that I came across a little video that I think gets at what it means to be a sheep and the shepherd uh and so Benjamin if you'll bring that up and read it you have a you raise your hand Yeah. I mean, there's lots of ways of being a shepherd. What kind of shepherd are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, well, let's, I'm going to show you a little clip of someone being a shepherd, uh, a literal shepherd in this sense. And uh, so, Benjamin, can you bring that up? So you can, okay, pause it, Benjamin. All right, so so you can see in this scene, you know, here this look, the sheep is caught in the ravine, and uh, and 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 you know, I don't know if you're like me, but I can identify with the, with the sheep having wandered away somewhere and maybe gone somewhere I wasn't supposed to, and then poof, all of a sudden I'm down. I can imagine the sheep heading out, and the mom's like okay, just don't go near the ravine. And like, she's like, oh, okay, I won't do that. And, but there's green grass over there or whatever. And, and perhaps because the sheep wasn't willing to lay something down or let something go, wanders over there and then whoop, there she is caught down in the ravine. And, and it's that point, you're like, uh-oh, I need some help. Start to cry out, ah, Jesus. <laughs> And then all of a sudden you feel it's like this your leg being jerked. You're like, no, I was calling for Jesus. I wasn't calling for someone to break my leg. And, and then the sheep is being lifted up. And then you start to realize, oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I am being saved. You start to push a little bit yourself. And then you and then you pop up and you're like, I'm free. I'm free. What once was lost is now and found. What once was imprisoned is now is free. And you bounce and hop for joy. And then boom fall right back in the ravine again. <laughs> Let's see it one more time, Benjamin.
Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, you can you can go off of it now. So, so I don't know if you can identify with that with that little poor little lamb. I can the sense that I get in a mess. God comes and helps me out, and I'm so happy that I forget what even happened. I was uh, with my friend Jim, and we were driving down to where uh, he he lived. It was maybe my second year in college, and and he was driving actually, and he had he'd gotten a relatively new car. It was a Honda Accord, and and those cars they were really quiet, and they could they accelerated really really quickly, and so it was easy to to not realize how fast you were going, and uh, and of course he realized how fast he was going when the blue lights came on, and cop pulled him over and says, "Hey, uh, you know how fast you're going? I don't know. I'm sorry, officer. You're going 70. It's 55." and I'm going to let you off this time with a warning. And, and so we breathe a sigh of relief, um, start to, to pull back out on the interstate. And, and Jim's just so, so happy that he, you know, just got a warning on this, that 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 joy must have led back down to his foot because before he realized it, the blue lights were coming on again. And he got pulled over and the cop this time wasn't quite as gracious and said, one time I'll let you off, but two, I got to write you a ticket right after being forgiven in a sense you go right back into the into the trap that feels like it happens sometimes we fail we get relieved from the consequences of our failure and then maybe do the same failure again maybe maybe many times over and it so, so this, this season of Easter, one of the things we've been exploring is the nature of failure and how God's able to transform those failures. That, that if the story ended with Jesus dying on the cross and that was it, then he would have just been another failed Messiah. But because we have Easter, it transforms that failure into something that's life and life-giving. And that, that the, what the disciples thought was this revolution, in one sense, was a failed revolution. But when Jesus comes back to life, it becomes a revolution that's so much bigger than what they'd anticipated. And so the similar invitation is for us, is, to, uh, is, is God is inviting us to come to terms with our own failures. Pay attention to them. Not necessarily see them as... as setbacks but maybe even as opportunities but the thing that kind of i think has to happen in this it's not just that our failures are transformed and we just don't even have to think about it we're like it's not like go out and fail all the time just to fail on purpose it's there needs to be a pause and a bit of a recollection on our failures to think huh what happened to get me in this was there something I was holding on to? Was there something I wasn't willing to let go of or lay down that got me into this? There's a time we need to be willing to admit our failures. Are we able to do that? Are we able to be honest about the ways we fail? If not, guess what may happen again? <laughs> but if so, we're able to see these failures as opportunities to learn and grow and be forgiven. Then I think a whole, a whole new world opens up. So back to that, uh, that twenty-two year old in the church parking lot. I did make a decision on that Sunday in nineteen ninety-five to come back again the next Sunday to UPPC, and uh, it was the worship was good. And this time, neither Jim nor Lynn was preaching, but Robin was preaching. <laughs> They had uh, three or four pastors on staff at that point, and 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 uh, and it was a little less uncomfortable for me to hear a woman preaching this time, and and uh, and I was able to pay a little bit more attention, and I was able to lay down and start to lay down this old way of thinking that I had grown up with, and over time, it was something I couldn't even tell you how in the world I could pick that up again. 
Robin was one of the ministers who was there when I decided, hey, I want to join this church and be a part of it. She answered a number of questions for me. And then a couple of years later, uh, after I came back from Philadelphia and after Aaron and I got married, guess who gave me a job? Lynn Corzin calls me up. She says, hey, do you want to work here for a while? And so she became my boss. And, and these are the green pastors that wouldn't have been available if I hadn't been willing to lay that old belief down. And so now, you know, I, I've been blessed to have my own daughter, who, who you all know is on the call right now. And I, and, I, and I think how much, I don't know that pastoral ministry is, is in her future, but I am so thankful to be able to offer her some models of where that's an option for her to consider and to think about and to see folks who are in leadership, who are women. And, and if I had not been willing to lay that down, none of that would be possible. How much would I have missed out on? And so I want to close by asking this question of us. Is there something that we're being invited by the Spirit, by God's Spirit, by Christ's resurrected Spirit to, to let go of, to give up, or to lay down? Is there something the Spirit of the resurrected Christ offering to hold on to even for us maybe it's something we pick up later but yeah, i'll hold that for you what's your sense this morning are we ready to let go let's pray Holy Spirit, you are in our spaces, you're with our, in our living rooms, in our kitchens. You're here with us in the sanctuary. You're in the hearts of all of us listening. And you have a way of working. You are usually very quiet and subtle and you kind of whisper. We have to pause to pay attention. And I, I pray that you would help us to pay attention to what you might be whispering and saying to us right now. Is there something we're being invited to lay down? Maybe it's a habit. Maybe it's a hope. Maybe it's a burden that we've been carrying. Help us to hear that, oh God. Thank you, God. Thank you for being our shepherd. Pray in your name, the one who seeks us when we are lost, who frees us when we are trapped, who saves us when we are hell-bent on finding some way to kill ourselves. Thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. We have a chance now to uh, offer some prayers and praises. Turn this around. All right, what, that's not great. All right, what are your prayers and praises this, this morning? Beth. Um, I want prayers for um, one of our bus drivers, John McFarland, passed away. I'd like to have prayers for his family. I need tolerance for the Okay. Is it Doug McFarland? Don. Don McFarland. So 
prayers of thanks for the lives of Don McFarlane and prayers for his family, for Cheryl, um, for Charlotte, Charlotte, sorry, for Charlotte, um, for comfort, for hope, and for the friends and family to know how to, to come around them in this time. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord. Read it. Unspoken. unspoken prayer request. If you have an unspoken prayer request, just raise your hand. These are our prayers to the Lord. Sherry. I have a prayer uh, for Tina Mormon. She she uh, had a little bit of a setback after her back surgery. She says she is on the mend, but she could still use some more prayers for healing. Okay, so prayers for Tina as she heals from her back surgery. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord. Dave? I've got a praise. We were notified a couple nights ago that our granddaughter, Karen, our first officer, Maryland, Colorado, Colorado Springs. All right. Yeah. So praise for uh, Dave and Donna's granddaughter, Aaron, who has who is uh, uh, got accepted to be a pilot with an airline. He said in Arizona or Colorado? Colorado. This is our praise to the Lord. Lord Hopefully I mean, we've got our, you know, folks who fly a lot. And so maybe someday they'll cross paths and be like, oh, hey, I know your grandparents. <laughs> Tracy? Um, I've been having some hip problems for a few months and I just started PT and um, they said it could take like four months to heal. So I um, just could use some prayers. All right. Yeah. So prayers for healing. Um, if the physical therapy goes well. For Tracy, this is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Beth? Prayers that we can get the bus drivers. Ah. We have none. <laughs> and nobody's watching. Okay. So prayers for bus drivers. Prayers for the bus drivers you have and the prayers for the bus drivers you need. The kids need to get places safely. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord. Prayer for my 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 dad texted me yesterday or two days ago and his his um his one of his childhood friends Joey Nunley um, died of a heart attack and um, and um, I mean he had a good life and they're very thankful for that but there's something about when you when you lose a friend uh, from when you were kids even if you haven't seen him in 20 years there's something about that so so prayers for Joey's um, widow and, and being a dad and, and that grief and just for also for gratitude for their friendship. This is our prayer to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Anyone else? want to ask uh, prayers for our confirmands, um, those who are in the confirmation class, for Will and Kylie and Josiah and Layton and Jane, who a, has a foot in and, and, a, and a, a already been confirmed. We'll include her in that because they're entering the home stretch of this class. They've gone to 28 sessions of it, and we've got about five more uh, up until Pentecost where they're discerning whether they want to say yes to joining the church and, uh, and saying, yeah, I want to, I want to follow Jesus in this way. And so, um, so prayers for, you'd be willing to pray for them as they enter this, this last stage of the discernment. Um, they've been great about um, asking questions and pursuing it. So prayers for the Spirit's discernment. This is our prayer to the Lord. Our prayer. Benjamin. Um, ongoing prayers for Grandpa. Yeah, he's still in a rehab facility, and he's doing better, but still prayers. Yeah, 
of prayers for Aaron's dad, John, uh, as he continues to uh, have physical rehabilitation and uh, just to continues to get better. This is our prayer to the Lord. All right, I invite us to gather these prayers and praises, and I'll keep space at the end. If you have a prayer, we'll be invited to offer it. Let us pray. Lord, we ask that you would give us the faith to believe that you are here, you're here with us, and that being here, you've heard our cries. Heard our prayers. You've heard us crying from the ravine. But we don't know how or you exactly respond. We pray that you give us the faith to believe that you've heard us. Now we pray as our shepherd taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. We forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from thine kingdom, power, glory, forever. So, brothers and sisters, those here, those online, those who are watching later, as you go out from here, shoot into the pastures, I invite you to notice one other thing about this passage, that Jesus says he's the good shepherd. He's not like the hired hands who when trouble really hits, they say, I'm not getting paid enough to do this. But the good shepherd, he doesn't think about that. He's willing, even at the cost of his own life, willing to lay himself down for us. We, there's a point we often reach with others. I'll do only so much to, so, to, to such a point. And then I just got to say, is it worth it? As you go from here, know that there's one who's willing to offer everything, won't forsake you, won't fail, will always be present to you. Good shepherd. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit until we meet again. And all of God's people said, Amen. Go or stay in peace, and we'll see you all next Sunday. Yeah. You can leave them open, Jeff. Thank you. Have you up the water? Yeah, empty that water. For the second sermon, that's for the second sermon. What the yeah, because there's another group coming in. That's right. 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 Yeah. But then can you dad? What's that? Oh. Can you mute yourself? You want me to mute myself? No. <laughs> Or Benjamin can do it. It's funny. You just way. want me to shut up, or you want? Oh, well, you're talking to people in the community. Muted. Can't talk to each other. Yeah, and, and we can't hear them, but we can only hear you because you're loud. Yeah.